everyone, my name is Erin. Welcome to my beautiful unschooled life. I am a single mom, I homeschool my kids, I built my own tiny house, and I grow my own food. I started doing YouTube videos about four years ago when my life was very, very different. I still lived in, in a normal house, a three bedroom house on one acre of land. I lived with my children's father and my marriage was extremely unhealthy. You're just gonna have to be okay with roosters because there are four roosters out right now and they're all competing with each other for their masculinity. So there's gonna be a lot of crowing while I make this video. <laughs> I believe very much that as a mother, my job is to put my money where my mouth is. My job is to live my life the way that I would like my children to live their lives. So if my children found themselves in a situation that was having a negative effect on their health, I like to think that they would find solutions, that they would figure out exactly how to build themselves a better life. And if I want them to do that, then I need to do that. So creating my YouTube channel was sort of my way of trying to solve that problem because what I wanted was to continue homeschooling my kids. What I wanted was to continue growing my own food. What I wanted was to have a farm and have my children, but not have to stay in an unhealthy relationship just because I could not afford to leave. So it took a lot of really clever problem solving to figure out how to have all the things that I wanted, to have all the things that I needed, really. Homeschooling my children is something that all of us, including their father, feel very strongly about. Growing my own food is something that I do for my mental health and my physical health and because it cuts down my grocery costs. So I had to be really clever about trying to figure out how I could build a life where I could homeschool my kids and grow my own food and not live in abject poverty. The YouTube channel was an idea that I had that possibly one day it might be a source of income. As time went by, and it did not become a source of income, I still kept doing it because I actually really loved doing it. I'm a very creative person. Actually, I'm a writer, but I just, it's hard to find time to write. Whereas YouTube was a way that I could be creative that's not quite as time consuming. It's something I can do with the children, whereas writing is such a solitary thing. And making YouTube videos is something we can do together as a family. So I kept doing the YouTube because I enjoyed it. I enjoyed having a record of our lives that was set to pretty music with lots of pretty footage. I enjoyed the creative outlet. So I kept doing it because I liked it. When I moved to the permaculture farm, I kept filming knowing that one, I enjoyed it and two, it could potentially be a source of income. I filmed two years worth of footage and then I spent one year editing it all into 10 videos. And once the videos were all finished, I released them one at a time over 10 weeks. By the time the final video went up, my channel finally reached the place that it needed to be in order for it to be a source of income. To make money off of YouTube, you need to hit 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. And you need to maintain those numbers to be monetized. So last week, <laughs> I reached the, the point where I can be monetized. I haven't made any money yet, and it's not even very much money. It's going to be like $80 a month. <laughs> but still, when you live as poorly as I do, $80 a month is, you know, we... we to celebrate, we went out for dinner, and it was the first time that we ate out in a restaurant in probably about a year. So 
it just gives us a little bit of wiggle room that we didn't have before. If I want to have enough money to actually be comfortable and to maybe get back to working on my house, to maybe expanding the infrastructure in the farm a little bit, to maybe setting aside some money for the kids' education or for my own retirement, then I need to keep the channel going. I need to feed the YouTube algorithm. So it's a very funny thing that I spent four years dreaming about reaching the point where I could be monetized. And as soon as I hit monetization, I celebrate for about five minutes. <laughs> and then now suddenly I'm thinking about, oh darn, <laughs> now I need to keep it up. I had planned the 10 videos about building the tiny house. And I did not plan any further. So it took me a year to make those 10 videos and now I have nothing to upload. I mean, that's not true. I have kept filming since I moved here. So I do have things that I can, videos that I can make, but editing the footage is the most time consuming part. Now I need to put out one video every week on top of homeschooling my kids, on top of growing my own food, on top of living in an off-grid tiny house where I'm lugging buckets of water and buckets of wastewater and emptying pee and poo buckets and going to the woods to harvest wood for my wood stove. I have a very, 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 very full life already. So now to try and squeeze in making a video a week, it's really daunting. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. I do really want to. Again, because I have enjoyed making videos. And I have enjoyed connecting with the people who've been watching my videos. And I could really use the money. So I'm going to try and make it a priority. But I don't know how much success I will have. And to put out a video every week, the quality is going to go down and I don't want the quality to go down. I really like telling good stories. I don't want to post a video just for the sake of posting a video. I want to post good videos. I want to post videos that make you happy or make you excited or make you proud or thrilled or motivate you to do things that you didn't think you could do. I want to make videos that are engaging. I don't want to just pump out a video just for the sake of pumping out videos, which by the way is exactly what this current video is. This video is me pumping out a video just for the sake of making a video. Now, it is the autumn. The farmer's market is over now. It's time to put the garden to bed. We've, in the fall, we always bring down the numbers of animals that we're taking care of. So those things should open up a little bit of time on my schedule. But I'm also not finished my house. I paused it when we moved across the road and started to build the farm here at Dawn's place. And I was really hoping that I could find some more time this winter to work on the house. It's only about 80% done. There's still quite a lot to do. So I've got a lot on my plate and I can do hard things. So I'm sure that I'll figure it out. But this is me telling you that I don't know what my channel is going to look like going forward. It started off as an unschooling channel where I explained to people how unschooling works and what it looks like and what it means. And absolutely, me building a tiny house is unschooling because my children are learning, number one, you can teach yourself how to build a house. It's teaching them how to learn how to do things. It's teaching them how to take great big risks and to chase after your dreams. So everything that I do is unschooling because unschooling is learning through life. So... Our life is constantly unschooling. But obviously what drew people to my channel is the tiny house and the off-grid and the homesteading because that's what's really 
that's what my, my that's what my viewers are drawn to. So I will have to be mindful of what kind of content I'm producing based on the people that watch my channel. The other thing that worries me about my YouTube channel growing is that there are a lot of people watching now. And when people watch, they judge. I am a person whose emotions are right on the surface of my skin. <laughs> I am very open, I am very honest, I am very vulnerable, I am very imperfect. And I like that I am open and honest about my imperfect. But I am also very easily hurt because I do keep my emotions on the surface. It's ladybug season right now, whenever they take the soybeans off. Ladybugs eat aphids, and aphids are attracted to soybeans. So when they harvest the soybeans, there's ladybugs everywhere. So, and they they bite and they stink. <laughs> so I'm really not loving ladybug season. Although 22 degrees in mid October, I'm I'm enjoying that. So now that I have a video that's had 17,000 views. I get more and more comments that aren't even necessarily cruel, they're just a bit thoughtless. And I understand I get the same way when it's the internet, you forget that it's a real person on the other side. And you might just say the, the first thing that comes to your head. And you might not, usually when we're in a conversation, although some people don't, <laughs> when you're in a conversation in person, you try it out in your head to see how it sounds before you say it out loud. I know there's a lot of people who don't do that and they just say it out loud. So now I'm suddenly finding myself subject to the opinions of thousands of people. So I'm going to have to very quickly come up with a strategy for how to develop a thicker skin and how to not let the, the thoughtless comments of strangers hurt my feelings. And I think one way that I can do that is they can provide me ideas for videos that I could make. Already I've had a few comments that triggered me and then I calmed down and I thought actually I could make a whole video on that subject explaining the situation. So that's kind of taking my anxi anxiety down a little bit about the thought of being a famous YouTuber. <laughs> I've only got a thousand subscribers. I'm not famous yet. But if I want to make enough money that it can be a source of reliable income, I'm going to have to be a famous YouTuber. And I'm going to have to put out a video a week. And I'm going to have to be able to handle people saying thoughtless things and it not breaking my heart. So that's where I am right now, on the threshold of this whole new chapter of my life and deciding if I want it or not. And I think I do. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to jump in head first and do my best and see how it goes. And I'm really excited that you guys are here with me. Most of you are extremely supportive. And it's really been beautiful how many people have said that I've inspired them to do something difficult. Because really that's it, isn't it? If we're afraid to do difficult things, then we'll never do anything. I mean, I have learned that the only, the way to fall in love with myself is to do things that I don't think I can do is to try things that I don't think I can do and to succeed at them. And maybe it's not the success that I envisioned, but I am so proud of myself that I felt stuck and I couldn't figure out how to get out. And I went around and around and around and around the problem for years. And finally I found the way out and now here I am in a situation where I have 
almost all, all the things that I need. And my life is full of joy and beauty and gratitude. And I'm really proud of myself that I did that. And if I can encourage other people to do that, then that's going to be a heck of a legacy that I can be really proud of. And I think that's also setting a really good example for my kids. So thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for bearing with me over the next little while while I find my footing as I run forward into this new terrifying chapter of my life. I'm really excited to have you with me. Thanks for hanging out with me. Take care. Come back to your breath. Don't drift away from me. I will come down to remind you of before. We can fly away from here. We can stay close, my dear. Swept up in the way. You can make a break for it. Ha, 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 ha.